day, people. What's going on? I really appreciate you all joining me yet again for a another entry into the so-called time capsule in today's episode we will be talking about a show or two uh i'll definitely be talking about a few fights you already know how i get down and uh we, we can't go without mentioning the supreme court justice taking a few gifted flights i've never heard of anything like that but i can't i can't see i'm surprised but i'll give you a bit more information and we'll, we'll get your guys taking the comments i'm gonna get y'all like it i promise uh but yes today's gonna be a very interesting show Show, I also want to talk about so called man's best friend, uh, America's favorite furry pet by far. Like, I, I don't think I think the closest is cats. Um, and obviously, you guys know I'm talking about dogs by now. I think they they beat cats out almost by uh 20 something million or something, some some crazy number. But y'all already know, y'all all love dogs, you know what I mean? Roof, roof. But yeah, but yeah, we're gonna get into it, and uh, I hope you guys find it interesting. All right, you already know before we start the show, I just gotta ask a question. All right, so let's go, dear future robots. Does the concept of pets evolve in the future? I mean, we already spoke about gene editing software and, and hardware. You know, CRISPR. Y'all, y'all remember that previous episode? But is designer pets a thing? Is that gonna be a thing in the future? Uh, am I gonna be able uh, give my rot roller green eyes uh is 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 my pit bull uh am i gonna have a pit bull with uh human teeth <laughs> i know that's extreme but i'm just saying like like the the idea the concept of pets in the future it has to change right eh, let's start the show yup and as we get right into it, I first got to ask, how, how y'all weekend, man? How's everything been? How you guys feeling out there? Uh, I hope everybody's been living in their blessings, all that good stuff. Um, my end, Easter with the family was cool. It was a lot of relaxation. Easter egg hunts with the kids. We got a house full of candy. It's almost like Easter is Halloween number two or something like that. I know they're uh, the religions or the, the uh, holidays are diametrically opposed almost, but it's still a lot of candy, right? <laughs> Especially if you're not um, super big into the the church thing on Easter Day or whatnot. But uh, in salute to 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 my people that are really into the religious side of things, salute to y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all clothes was the most pastel of pastels, the brightest of greens and purples and all of that kind of stuff. Man, salute to y'all. But yeah, as I was saying, man, uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot of candy in my house right now, which we're not a super big candy eating house. Obviously, my kids love it. But as the parent, as a responsible parent, I try to, you know, uh, tamper that down a little bit because they got to keep those chompers right. But yeah, uh, hopefully you guys out there uh, enjoyed it with the family as much as I did. Now, like I said, I want to definitely get right into the episode. This scrap metal media should be fun. Uh, I appreciate those that are continuing to show support. Uh, like I said before, watch me grow. Uh, it's, eventually, it's going to be watch me glow. So jump on the train. <laughs> appreciate y'all, man. Let's go right into scrap metal media. Welcome, welcome to Scrap Metal Media, where all news is two-faced. That's right. Take it or leave it. <laughs> uh, so, the Dalai Lama is out here licking the little ones, y'all. Hide the kids and hide your wives, man. Like, oh, I was so disappointed to see this because um, after studying a few different religions, the concepts behind Buddhism are very intriguing. I'm not going to front. That's, that's kind of where it ends, especially after seeing something like this. Man, we got to stop this people worship. We just got to stop this people worship. If you haven't seen the video, I don't really feel like going through a play by play. Y'all can go ahead and click on and and, and, see, and click pause right now. Go watch it on YouTube or Google it and then come back because I'm not going to get I thought about giving y'all play by play, but I might throw up in my mouth. I don't want to do that. But I will say this in some weird, bizarro world, if that had been my kid and don't get me wrong, got to be some weird world won't be but just in case i would have went up there and made the news because i would i would have put some hands some some hands and feet on the dalai lama you know what i mean and no disrespect to my buddhist people out there y'all y'all do y'all thing but he's the 
he's the 14th one. I mean, <laughs> I mean, were, were the other ones wild like this? This is kind of wild, man. Y'all know it's wild. I don't know. I don't know. But we got to evolve out of this human worship, this people worship type thing, man. Because whenever we start to worship people like they can do no wrong, they usually prove us wrong. <laughs> it um, brings me to uh, this new show on Amazon Prime. It's called Swarm. A uh, really good show. Y'all take a look. Let me know what y'all think. First of all, everybody knows who Beyonce is. So if y'all know who Beyonce is, y'all got to know what the beehive is. It's pretty much an extreme uh, lesion of of fans, right? They're, they're the most loyal, uh, loving, but also, uh, what do you call it, fierce? Yeah, I mean, they don't play, especially on social media when it comes to their Beyonce. So Swarm essentially follows a character that is a major Beehive member. Uh, and it's, it's not explicitly Beyonce, but it is. Like you, If you're watching, you know they're meant there. You know the inf influencer. You know the inspiration, I should say, uh, is for sure Beyonce, right? This girl goes crazy, y'all. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil anything at all. But man, uh, so far it's been interesting. It starts a little slow outside of Chloe Bailey's sex scene. She was throwing it back crazy. Uh, how come a lot of these, man, shout out to Lala Anthony, where your first uh, foray into acting has to be a sex scene. That's kind of wild. But, you know, Hollywood's wild for that one, man. But hey, uh, she did her thing. Wasn't terrible at acting at all. I gave her that. But it starts off a little slow and gets better and never really drops the ball. I'm about five episodes in. I'm intrigued. I'm going to keep watching. It does continue to get better whilst getting weirder. Uh, so, And that's, by the way, uh, Janine Neighbors and Donald Glover. So you already know. It's kind of like it feels like you're watching an episode of Atlanta mixed with a Jordan Peele movie. That's exactly what it feels like. Uh, but y'all y'all check it out and let me know what y'all think about it. Uh, right on to boxing, guys. I got to give an update. I talked about Shakur Stevenson versus Yoshino last week. That was, uh, I'm not even going to say it was a great fight. Uh, it was a domination by Shakur. He looked great. I didn't watch the fight, honestly, thinking that Yoshino would really beat him, but I watched to analyze Shakur Stevenson. Like, like I said before, y'all should know I'm a major boxing fan. Shakur hit every mark, man. He looked great. I'm looking forward to him fighting Devin Haney and the other A guys in the future because this guy was a, a B or a C plus type fighter, uh, period. Uh, but definitely was a great, a good win for him. Uh, on to the next. Let's go. You got to fight bigger, bigger and better guys, man. Let's go. Uh, my guy Fandora got knocked out by Mendoza. Ah, that was a tough one to watch, man. I had a lot of hopes for this kid in the... Um, in the uh junior middleweight division man uh i i think uh, this ain't the end for him though this is not the end for him uh this was his first loss and i think he can get it back i, I would love to I, I'm, I'm not missing that rematch i will say that uh let me just move on from boxing i don't want to make this too much of a boxing show um israel adesanya got his belt back off of alex Vieira. Uh, that was a great fight. That was the best fight that I watched this weekend. Uh, I think it's going to go down as probably one of the fights of the year, if not the fight of the year, as far as MMA is concerned, at least. But man, what a fight. You can tell that Izzy made all the adjustments that he could. Alex Pieta tried to pretty much fight the same fight. Uh, and for those who didn't see it, Israel Adesanya knocked him out. And then went, went, <laughs> and then went ahead to troll this man's son. Uh, but, but don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. It's petty, but sure. Uh, the son was the one who trolled him first years ago. Israel still remembered it, held it in, used it as motivation clearly, and uh, did the same thing. I thought it was hilarious. Y'all might need to Google that and uh, check it out for yourselves, man. But shout out to the champ champ, Israel Adesanya. Uh, also on that card was uh, Jorge Masvidal versus Gilbert Burns. I believe that was a TKO uh, ref stoppage, I believe. Um, damn, was it? I can't remember. I was back and forth between so many different fights, y'all. Uh, but either way, Jorge Masvidal lost the fight. And uh, he went ahead and retired, which he should have. Uh, I thought that maybe his last two fights, he didn't look too good to me. Uh, but uh, bigger than that fight was him promoting Donald Trump after the fight. I'm like, bro, are you gonna are you moving into a career in lobbying or something like that? It was kind of strange to see because this is like the UFC fan base. It's you know, it's 
like these are fight fans like but yeah it was it was kind of strange to see y'all who've seen it know what i'm talking about uh he even said i think he said the let's go brandon thing which is obviously a derogatory chant for um go ahead move on to your politics masvidal i can't believe that man trump really went from courtroom to cage side like he was just chilling there with dana white uh kind of weird he seemed a little out of place but hey got all that promo uh <laughs> Uh, speaking of politics, man, Clarence Thomas, did y'all hear about this man getting flewed out like an Instagram baddie by this billionaire? Like, what's what's like? Wow, you're you're a grown man. It, uh, if y'all don't think these are bribes, I don't know what to tell y'all. These are obviously bribes, man. This man has been getting gifts for almost 20 years, lavish vacations, uh, long-term trips on super yachts. Like this is some of the most obvious stuff. And they're able to just say, oh, hey, I didn't know. Uh, guess I won't do it again. And you got the, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, geez, uh, his, his, this mega donor is, um, uh, let me get his name, Harlan Crow. Yes, yeah, a guy named Harlan Crow. He's a uh, billionaire business owner, uh, mega donor to the uh, Republican Party. He's uber conservative, apparently. <sighs> Come on, my guy. Come on. I know we're Americans and y'all don't expect us to be smart or thinkers or anything. Just just ants, workers, peons, whatever you want to call it. But, bro, we ain't that stupid, man. Like, y'all got so much power right now and y'all able to just move the needle as y'all wish, get things as y'all want. But, man, all that's going to end, bro. Like, y'all kids not going to share the same benefits that y'all able to. Like, these greedy people that y'all put in power, put in position in politics, they're not going to be there forever, man. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous, man. How, how, like, how do we know decisions on the Supreme Court haven't been uh, manipulated by people like Harlan Crow for the past 20, 30 years or even longer? man the faith in our system is is going downhill right along with the faith in our economy Ugh, america we're, we're in a tough spot right now man we got we got to demand better we got to demand more from our system and the people that we put in power or the people that are put in power uh let's start by demanding change or demanding different from the corporations that are backing these people, the corporations that are putting money in their back pockets. Let's let's demand a little better, man, because something's got to change. This is ridiculous. I, I completely understand why people are turned away uh, from politics or believing that things can change, man. Like this, this is ridiculous. I hope there's gonna be a real investigation into this because they seem like they're trying to brush it under the rug. Uh, they don't want to make the institution look bad. I get it. They're expecting these people to be able to police themselves. Uh, but no, man, there's only been one Supreme Court justice in 1805, I think it was, or 1804, uh, that has been, um, uh, they call it impeached as well. Uh, but there was only one that's ever been replaced, and that was Justice Samuel Chase in 1805. Uh, we might need to look into his behavior, man, as far as Clarence Thomas goes, because this is ridiculous. And to kind of give us this kind of uh, waving off of an of, of a reasoning or excuse is is ridiculous they don't have respect for us man something's got to change man something's got to change and obviously i'm not talking about violence i think we can handle handle it all uh politically uh, uh civically i should say but geez something's got to change man uh it, moving on man moving on uh did you all see that uh florida's governor ron DeSantis actually made it a lot easier to move around with weapons in florida and it's very just the, the optics man, who, who, man. <laughs> it's very interesting because we we're not we're not too far removed from a uh, a mass shooting right there's almost one every day right but we're not too far from uh, removed from a major one that that took a lot of lives and now you make it possible to have a gun concealed in Florida without a permit so one less barrier <laughs> one less barrier in play uh for people wanting to carry guns around every day like wow i mean it, i guess it's better than doing the open carry because i don't know if y'all know but a lot of open carry states there's an epidemic of guns being literally taken off people's hips uh so you have a gun you're walking around with it on your hip open carry and people are literally snatching it from you and what you're gonna do try to get it back they might shoot you so I can imagine why they didn't just do just open carry for that very reason. But the optics, man, it don't look good at all. 
Uh, I think Ron DeSantis wants to make Florida, Texas very bad. I mean, he copies almost everything Greg Abbott does anyways. Uh, if, if y'all out there for some reason like Ron DeSantis, maybe y'all not y'all, y'all not into politics or y'all, y'all let social media teach y'all about politics. I don't know. But if y'all love Ron DeSantis, y'all might as well love Greg Abbott. Just, you know, just look at Greg Abbott. Whatever he does, Ron DeSantis does. He's like he's copying and play playbook for playbook. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Uh, but but yes, uh, y'all making Florida look crazy, man. And don't get me wrong. Y'all already know I'm not a uh, I'm not against guns. Uh, I think our society needs a lot of fiction. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. <sighs> man. Let's move on, man. who are wondering i named this episode all dogs go to heaven uh for one uh i I just thought it was cool i liked it and uh but mainly i wanted to explore what i think is the connection between the words god and dog aside from them being what's called a levy drone that's where you can you know give a mirror image of a word and it means something else uh but besides from that I think there's a connection that a lot of us are missing and i think it goes back to old rome uh i'm gonna plead my case and you guys do with it what you will um i think it's pretty uh uh close what can be considered spot on by by some but just hear me out hear me out all my religious people don't get offended uh you know i got respect for our religions but um I also love information. If you can just be open-minded, you don't know how far you can get. Uh, be solid in your beliefs, but make sure your your beliefs are, are solid with you. And uh, make sure they're just solid in general. So, dogs come from wolves. I think most adults in the room should know that by now, right? Dogs come from wolves, all right? Uh, through uh, centuries of selective breeding, uh, maybe the nicer wolves, and when you want the meaner wolves, but selective breeding over centuries uh, creates what we now know as dogs, right? But wolves specifically are responsible for what we mostly know as the typical dog, right? No matter the breed, y'all. So wolves were originally competition when it wasn't as abundant as far as resources go, as far as food that grew. I mean, they had different seasons there. It was really harsh climates uh not much food grew that was edible at least so they had to hunt for almost everything all right to stay warm for meat there was a lot that needed to be done for these people to survive and the wolves in the area in the region just posed a threat not only were the wolves aggressive but they were also cutting into the food that these early humans had to hunt over time Obviously, they're taking out the, the the more aggressive wolves. So over time, the less aggressive wolves start to uh, become a bit more prominent, uh, start coming around. And just over time, this could have been centuries, y'all, but over time, start interacting a little bit more with the growing population of humans in the region. Now, the humans in the region, obviously, you start interacting with animals, you start interacting with a stick and become friends. So... They start taking a liking to each other. The animals start coming by. And uh, now you got the early stages of domestication and people wanting to keep them as pets. Uh, And and obviously uh, workers. (laughs) And you got an animal that's capable, intelligent, strong. And uh, all it's asking for is a little bit of food. That's, That's easy and simple, right? So like I said, all this leads to eventual domestication. Now, um, honestly, without wolves, uh, there as helpers and companions I doubt proto-Europe would have managed to the extent that they have I really don't think they would have been able to grow as they have I will say that if you're following me you can kind of understand why dogs would be revered as such uh, and, and why they would be called man's best friend because according to this European history they're telling you that without this specific animal we would not have made it all right now for those out there that are looking at looking at me right now like i'm crazy trust me i know what i'm talking about it just takes you to do a little more research to understand right the reason why 
they're considered man's best friend one is because we're talking about proto-europe so we're talking about white people they they only see themselves as men you know just, you know it's a man's best friend they're not talking about any other man but themselves right but uh without wolves we already know it's obvious without wolves aka dogs the society would have failed these people wouldn't have been able to survive in this region right period all right so let's i also want to go back to just a little bit just to provide a little more evidence uh, the story of Romulus and Remus. Now, according to Roman mythology, Romulus and Remus were twin brothers who were the sons of the god Mars and the Vestal Virgin Rhea Silvia. Uh, a Vestal Virgin uh, back in the day was somebody, a woman, uh, a pretty woman who was charged with keeping the fires going in uh, these temples, these, these temples for the gods that they had back then. Uh, she, I can't remember which temple that she was in, but Nonetheless, uh, the lore goes, apparently the god Mars uh, just comes down from the heavens and finds her attractive. And so he takes human form. He uh, seduces her, sleeps with her, impregnates her with these twins. Now, again, in her position, she's vowed to celibacy, right? Her, her, her only job is to maintain this temple. And in exchange for doing that, you know, having no kids and just maintaining this temple, you get tons of uh, privileges, right? As a woman in ancient Rome, you get to vote, you get to own property, all kind of stuff like that. Things that women weren't able to do in that society, right? Normal women. So um, he impregnates her and because he's a God, all right, he's clearly not sticking around. The people punish her by, <laughs> it, it, the story is wild, y'all. Uh, they punish her by burying her alive, right? That was the punishment for breaking her vow of celibacy. So she already had the kids. They ended up just abandoning the kids by the Tiber, uh, Tiber River, right? And uh, they were discovered apparently by a she-wolf. I don't know why they're just gonna say a regular wolf, but they were discovered by a she-wolf who nursed and cared for them until they were found by a shepherd, Faustulus. And that's who raised them as his sons. <sighs> I don't know how y'all feel about there, but um, and y'all can look up that uh, information on your own. Uh, fact check me, please. Uh, I don't believe this truly happened, right? <laughs> what I think this is 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 kind of like a, a euphemism, or I'm, I'm just passing down the story of how they made it. Now you see, these two twins were abandoned and found by a wolf. I think they're talking about because these, like they they told. They, they told the truth in these stories. They just kind of, kind of missed, you know, mystified them a bit. But I think what they're saying here is that mankind abandoned us and we wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for this animal, right? Look at that story and tell me I'm lying. Tell me I don't got something here, right? So again, I don't think is an, I do not think by any means that it is an accident that God and dog are spelled the same. All right, again, again for y'all people out there god is not a name it is a title all right if if you're getting upset by this uh just because you're not well versed in your own religion go read a book i don't know pick whatever religion i'm not uh, uh specifically picking on any religions but this is a fact finding mission all right and all i'm saying is is i don't think it's an accident that dog and god are spelled the same i, I don't i don't think it's an accident at all uh, we're in a society where everything is in remembrance of everything, 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 everything. It is no accident, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got. I might. I, I might do a series on this, honestly, because <laughs> it's so interesting. Rome is a fascinating thing. Uh, Greece and Rome were some of the first places that I started researching when I started getting into history. Um, I love it all, and like I said, I think uh, there's a lot of um, allegory. And there's a lot of like misdirection, uh, but the stories, they, they mean a lot if you're able to really examine them, right? But hey, did I make a compelling case? <laughs> uh, I hope I didn't ruffle any feathers. <laughs> This is bit by bit.
that five bit prediction for the day is all right all biological pets will be in the future replaced by digital ones uh that's that's just what i see coming y'all like y'all remember 1997 there used to be these things called the tamagotchis uh they were like little keychain uh egg shaped kind of game boys they only had three buttons and uh, usually it was like a pet dog or cat or something like that. But you can actually take care of this digital pet. And they required you to feed them, uh, show them love, uh, pay attention to, you know, like it was almost like a sim, a simulated pet. And uh, they were, you know, they, they required your attention. Because after, like, if you didn't pay attention to it for like an hour or something like that, two hours, maybe it'd get sick or it could even die. So um, this thing, obviously, for little kids, and I think I remember having one back in the day, but they were very addicting. They just were. Uh, people were literally ignoring their real life pets uh, for these digital ones. Uh, so I'm just saying this to reiterate that I don't think it'll take <laughs> as much time to get over like flesh and blood animals as you guys out there think it will. Uh, <laughs> uh, and hey, for all y'all that love y'all pets and think they're an extension of y'all, okay <laughs> but yeah that's the future i see man uh that's my prediction uh we're gonna have uh digital dogs and and digital cats and stuff like that and by digital i mean mechanical or robotic uh, i think the technology is getting very close uh to where they'll be uh, somewhat indistingu indistinguishable uh but yeah it's just gonna make so much more sense man but hey We'll see. That's my prediction, y'all. Take it or leave it. <laughs> uh, that's all I really have for the Time Castle today, y'all. I'm tired. Appreciate y'all. Peace. Roof. And we are just universes crashing, y'all. So just do your best to leave a mark. Once again, this is Wendy. I appreciate you listening. Dear future robots, peace.